Remote Differential Compression Even though Remote Differential Compression was first introduced in Windows Server 2003 R2 as a means to reduce the bandwidth required for replicating data, ever since Windows Vista was released, I seem to get asked about what it is. So rather than try and avoid the question or try and shove it somewhere inside another video, we decided that we could have a brief talk about it you guys would be aware of it and what it does. Now like I said, Remote Differential Compression came out with Windows Server 2003 R2 and it's now made its way to Windows Vista. So what is it? Does it impact you? And why should you even care? Well, you probably should care since Remote Differential Compression is a bit of a double-edged sword. On one hand, it can speed up copying data from a remote location. On the other hand, it can slow down copying data from a remote location. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Sometimes it can speed up copying files. Other times it can slow it down. So in this short video on remote differential compression, we'll talk about what remote differential compression really does, and then you can decide whether you want to use it or not. Now the first thing I will mention is that remote differential compression, or RDC, as we'll refer to it from now on, is turned on by default with Windows Vista. So if you do plan on using it, you don't need to do anything. If you do want to turn it off, however, well that's a different story, and we'll show you how to do that later in this video. Now the real point of RDC is to only transmit the differences in data that needs to be copied. Now I will point out that this doesn't just mean physical files, although for the purpose of this video we'll be concentrating on file to file transfers. Or to put it simply, when you want to copy one file from one computer to another. Now in many cases, you may already have a copy of the file or a lot of it. Say for argument's sake that you've got a Word document on your computer which is say one megabyte in size. Now on a file server, there's a newer updated version of the same file, and let's say it's two megabytes in size. Well with remote differential compression, the idea is that why transfer two megabytes when we could only transfer the difference, which is one megabyte? Well that's the theory anyway, and RDC obviously does have some overhead as it needs to compute the difference between the two files before it can be transferred, and that of course takes time. Now I'm not about to go into the mathematics used to compute these differences, but if you're at all interested in those details, head off to Microsoft's website and do a search for remote differential compression and you'll find some very interesting and boring, depending on which way you look at it, white papers on RDC. So even though it takes longer to start the initial transfer of data, after all, first, both the files at the remote end and the local end need to be compared so RDC knows what the differences are over slower WAN links, which are also more expensive to run than local connections, you're likely to realize both a performance increase in the overall transfer time and a monetary saving as well, since the amount of transferred data is likely to be lower. Now when a file is transferred using RDC, the differences between the two files are compressed before being sent, and that can drastically alter the speed of the transfer depending on what sort of file's been transferred. So if the file is a large text file, for example, say a one megabyte text file, then it will compress very well, and RDC is likely to offer a performance increase. However, if the file is one that's heavily compressed to begin with, such as an image file like a JPEG, then you're not really gonna see any differences, especially if the file is a small one, and this can cause RDC to take longer than it would just to copy the whole file. Since the main point of RDC is to copy differences in files to save bandwidth and to make these transfers quicker, the main area where it offers a major benefit is in remote networks that have limited bandwidth. Now it's also worth pointing out that if you don't have any files on your machine that are similar to the one that you're planning on copying to your machine, well RDC won't offer you any benefit there since the differences are the whole file. Now RDC by default only works on files that are 64 kilobytes or larger. So if you're transferring thousands of very small files, then RDC isn't gonna offer you any benefit. But where you have large compressible files that you need to transfer, RDC 
will save you a fair bit of bandwidth and time of course since the overall transfer should be quicker and there's less data to copy. Alright, so let's go and take a look at where we can turn RDC on or off. So we'll click on Start, Control Panel, then we'll choose Programs, and up the top here we'll choose Turn Windows Features on or off. Alright, well, here you can see Remote Differential Compression is currently turned on, so to turn it off, simply uncheck the box and then click on OK. Now this will take around 30 seconds or so to completely turn off, so be prepared to wait a moment for Vista to do its thing. So to identify whether RDC is better left turned on or switched off really comes down to your own situation. If you're a home user that copies files back and forth from another computer and it's a lot of small image files, you'll probably find that if you crunch the numbers then RDC would be offering you very little or no benefit and it might even be faster with it turned off. But let's say that you mainly copy large files such as virtual hard disk images back and forth, especially over WAN links, then RDC should indeed make things quicker. So all I can suggest is that if you care about finding out more about RDC on your system, do a few of your own tests. Copy a few files back and forth with it turned on, then turn it off and do the same thing. Whatever differences you record, will tell you if RDC is helping or hindering your system. Now if you're at all unsure about whether you should turn it off or leave it on, I'd recommend that you just leave it on since in most cases home users of Vista or even most corporate users that pretty much access data on their local network won't really notice any difference either way. But indirectly you'll probably be enjoying the speed increase without even realising it. 